What are some words you'd use to describe Rikers Island? Hell. Plain and simple, hell. When we think of prisons, we often imagine them as grim, unpleasant places where dangerous criminals are locked away. But for some of the most heinous offenders, standard prison cells simply don't suffice. And that is why specialized, inhumane cells have been created specifically for those who have committed unspeakable atrocities. Join us today as we take a closer look at the notorious cells and the controversial practices used to confine those serial killers who have been deemed too dangerous to ever walk free again. Number 10, Black Dolphin Prison, Russia. First on our list comes the Black Dolphin Prison, a maximum security facility located in Solilevsk, Russia, which is widely considered to have some of the most inhumane cells in the world. It is primarily used to house some of Russia's most dangerous and violent offenders, including serial killers and terrorists. It is infamous for its strict and harsh regime, which includes brutal and inhumane practices that are designed to strip the prisoners of their humanity and break their will. One of the most notorious aspects of Black Dolphin is the use of strict regime cells, which are small and isolated cells designed to completely cut off all communication with the outside world. The prisoners are kept in these cells for up to 22 hours a day, with minimal contact with other prisoners or staff. They are not allowed any personal belongings or even a bed, and are forced to sleep on the floor. The cells are often described as coffin-like, with no windows or natural light, and the prisoner is subjected to extreme sensory deprivation. Inmates also suffer brutal disciplinary methods, including beatings and torture. The staff members are known to use electric shock, suffocation, and other painful methods to punish prisoners for any perceived infractions. Convicts in the Black Dolphin are subject to constant surveillance and monitoring. Every aspect of their daily lives is under scrutiny, and they are not allowed any privacy or autonomy. Their movements are restricted, and they are only allowed to eat, sleep, and use the restroom at specific times. This prison is especially known for its unique architectural design, which is intended to prevent any escape attempts. It is surrounded by walls, fences, and guard towers, with several layers of security checkpoints before reaching the actual cell blocks. The cells are designed to be highly restrictive and dehumanizing, with the intention of breaking the spirits of the most violent and dangerous offenders. Human rights organizations have criticized the conditions, but the Russian government maintains that they are necessary for public safety. Number 9. ADX Florence, United States ADX Florence, also known as the Alcatraz of the Rockies, is a high-security federal prison located in Florence, Colorado. It is home to some of the most dangerous convicts in the United States, including notorious serial killers and high-profile offenders. ADX Florence is known for its harsh design that prevents inmates from communicating with each other or the outside world. The windows in the cells are specifically designed to prevent inmates from determining their exact location within the complex. Measuring just 4 inches by 4 feet, they offer only a view of the sky and roof making it nearly impossible to plan an escape. Prisoners are permitted to exercise in a concrete pit that resembles an empty swimming pool, which further adds to the confusion of their location. The pit is so small that it can only take 10 steps in a straight line or 31 steps in a circle. Inmates spend up to 23 hours a day in their cells, with limited access to basic necessities such as food and water. The prison is designed to be highly secure, with numerous surveillance cameras, motion detectors, and other high-tech security measures in place to prevent escape attempts. Inmates are subjected to rigorous security checks and searches, and visitors are not allowed to touch the inmates or bring any items into the place. Serial killers and other serious criminals at ADX Florence are treated brutally. Inmates are subject to intense psychological pressure, including interrogation and mind games designed to exacerbate their mental health issues. Restrictive policies also include sensory deprivation, where inmates are denied access to natural light, fresh air, and human interaction, which leads to significant mental health issues. The conditions at the ADX Florence have been the subject of significant controversy and criticism with many arguing that the place violates basic human rights and may constitute torture. Inmates at ADX Florence have reported high rates of mental illness, life-taking attempts, and other psychological problems as a result of the harsh conditions and treatment. The inhumane practices here with serial killers range from prolonged solitary confinement, restricted communication, and lack of access to medical care, to harsh living conditions, interrogation, and mind games, and restrictive policies. These practices have led most of them to severe mental health problems, including depression, anxiety, and losing their life, but the conditions persist to this day. Number 8. San Quentin State Prison, USA Next, we have San Quentin State Prison, which has a strong reputation for housing some of the most infamous serial killers like Ted Bundy, Charles Manson, Richard Ramirez, etc. Located in California, USA, it is one of the country's oldest penitentiaries with a history spanning over 150 years. The prison cells in San Quentin are infamous for their cramped and dehumanizing conditions, with inmates often packed in like sardines. The cells are small, measuring only 4.5 by 9.5 feet, leaving little room for personal belongings or even movement. In 
inmates suffer from a sense of confinement, lack of physical activity, minimal contact with their families, and lack of stimulation. They are also subject to strict daily routines, with little time for personal activities or outdoor recreation. The treatment of serial killers in San Quentin is a controversial topic, with some arguing that they receive preferential treatment compared to other inmates, while others believed that they are subject to harsher conditions. Inmates on death row are kept in special housing units, where they are confined to their cells for up to 23 hours a day. The cells are made of solid steel and have a door with a small slot for food delivery. The slots are too small for the inmates to see out, and they are only allowed out of their cells for one hour of exercise per day in a small concrete yard that is designed to prevent inmates from having any contact with other inmates or staff. This isolation leads to severe psychological distress, and many prisoners have reported experiencing mental health problems as a result. One of the most notorious cases involving San Quentin and serial killers is that of Charles Manson. Manson and his followers were responsible for a string of murders in the late 1960s, and Manson himself was eventually convicted and sentenced to death. While on death row, Manson became a media sensation, attracting fans and followers who were fascinated by his twisted charisma. Manson's cell in San Quentin was located in the Adjustment Center, a part of the prison reserved for the most dangerous and violent inmates. It was known for its unique decor, featuring strange drawings and symbols that were rumored to be part of his cult's beliefs. Despite efforts to improve conditions in recent years, San Quentin remains a notoriously dangerous and overcrowded facility. With a high rate of violence and a shortage of resources, inmates continue to suffer inhumane conditions that leave them with lasting psychological scars. Number 7. Rikers Island Prison, USA Rikers Island Prison, a complex of 10 different jails, has been known for its harsh conditions, violent environment, and inhumane treatment of inmates for decades. With a history of abuse and corruption, Rikers Island has become synonymous with the dark side of the American justice system. The cells are small, cramped, dirty, and poorly ventilated, with inadequate heating and cooling. Inmates often report problems with pests, such as rats and cockroaches, and issues with mold. The inmates are often forced to endure extreme temperatures with no access to natural light or fresh air. The lack of space and proper facilities make it difficult for the inmates to maintain proper hygiene, which often leads to the spread of disease. Serial killers are often housed in maximum security units, where they are kept in solitary confinement for long periods of time. The conditions in these units are particularly brutal, with little access to natural light, exercise, or human interaction. Inmates in these units often suffer from mental health problems as a result of isolation and lack of stimulation. In addition to the poor conditions in the cells themselves, Rikers Island has also been criticized for its treatment of inmates. There have been numerous reports of violence and abuse by correctional officers, including instances of excessive use of force and neglect of basic medical needs. In 2019, the New York Times reported that the conditions in Rikers Island were so inhumane that they should be closed down altogether. The report described it as a place where brutality and neglect are common and where a pervasive culture of violence flourishes unchecked. The report also detailed several instances of abuse, including beatings, assault, and harassment. It is one of those places where human life is valued to the least and where basic rights are neglected. While the place has made some improvement in recent years, the conditions remain far from ideal. The high rate of violence, inadequate medical care, and mistreatment of prisoners make Rikers Island one of the most inhumane correctional facilities in the United States to this day. Number 6. La Sante Prison, France Located in the heart of Paris, France, La Santé Prison has become an icon of the French penal system, but behind its formidable exterior lies a dark and disturbing world of violence, corruption, and despair. Built in the 19th century, the detention center has a long and dark history, housing some of France's most dangerous criminals. Over the years, it has gained a reputation for being a brutal and inhumane place, where prisoners are subject to appalling conditions and mistreatment. The prison cells at La Santé are incredibly small and are often overcrowded, with up to three offenders crammed into one cell. The cells are devoid of natural natural light and also incredibly hot during the summer and freezing cold in the winter, making it almost impossible for the inmates to get any rest. The conditions at La Sante are deplorable, harsh, and cruel, with reports of widespread abuse and mistreatment of detainees. Many inmates are subject to beatings and other forms of physical violence by the guards, and there have been reports of prisoners being left without food or water for days on end. For the most dangerous criminals, including serial killers, the prison has a special high-security unit known as the Cotier de Haute Sécurité, or Q UHS. This unit is designed to hold the most violent and dangerous criminals and is considered one of the world's harshest jail environments. The cells in the QHS are even smaller than those in the general population, measuring just 2 meters by 1.5 meters. The cells have no natural light, and the only source of illumination comes from a dim light bulb. Inmates are confined to their cells for 23 hours a day, with only one hour of exercise in a small outdoor yard. They have no access to television, radio, or newspapers, and are only allowed one hour of monthly visits from family members. Despite 
despite the deplorable conditions. Many notorious criminals have been held at La Sante, including Carlos the Jackal, the infamous terrorist who carried out a series of attacks in the 1970s and 80s. Other high-profile inmates include the notorious French gangster Jacques Merin and the Emir of the GIA, a terrorist organization that carried out a series of bombings in France in the 1990s. In recent years, the French government has taken steps to improve the conditions at La Sante and to reduce the use of solitary confinement in penitentiaries. However, the place continues to be a bleak and harrowing place, with a history marred by darkness and known for its reputation as one of the most severe correctional facilities worldwide. La Sante stands as a testament to the harsh reality of incarceration, where even basic human rights are neglected. Number 5. Tadmor Prison, Syria Deep in the heart of Syria, nestled in the midst of the vast desert, stands the Tadmor Prison, infamous for its barbaric treatment of inmates. Originally built in 1934 as a military barracks, Tadmor was converted into a jail in the 1960s and became a symbol of the cruelty of the Syrian government. The correctional facility was known for its appalling conditions, torture, and rampant human rights abuses. In 1980, a group of prisoners launched a failed escape attempt, which led to a crackdown by the prison authorities. Over 500 detainees were killed in the ensuing massacre, which was carried out by the Syrian army. The cells at Tadmor were overcrowded, dark, and filthy. Inmates were forced to endure extreme temperatures as the place lacked proper ventilation and heating. The cells were infested with rats and other vermin, and inmates were not provided with adequate medical care, leading to the spread of disease. The treatment of serial killers at Tadmor was particularly gruesome. Inmates were subject to brutal beatings, electric shocks, and other forms of torture. Many were executed without a fair trial, and their families were not informed of their whereabouts whereabouts or their fate. Tadmor consisted of two main areas, the old and the new. The old prison, which was built in the 1930s, was used to house political prisoners and other dissidents. It was notorious for its torture chambers, where convicts were subjected to brutal beatings and many other forms of torture. The new prison was built in the 1990s and was designed to hold up to 5,000 offenders. It was equipped with modern facilities, including a hospital, a library, and a mosque. However, the conditions in the place were still harsh, with prisoners housed in overcrowded cells and and subject to regular manhandling. In 2011, as part of the Syrian civil war, the prison was attacked by rebel forces and was eventually abandoned by the Syrian government. It is now a ruin and a stark reminder of the brutality that occurred behind its walls. The reformatory had a reputation for being one of the harshest and most brutal in the world, and human rights groups welcomed its closure. Tadmor Prison still holds a very dark and brutal history. Although the place is now abandoned, it remains a stark reminder of the cruelty that occurred behind its walls. Number 4. Carandiro Penitentiary, Brazil Carandiru Penitentiary was one of the largest correctional facilities in Latin America. Located in Sao Paulo, Brazil, it was built in 1956 and had a capacity of over 8,000 inmates. However, the prison was well known for overcrowding and violence, and was also known for its special cells known as the fridge. These cells were small, windowless rooms where inmates were subjected to extreme cold temperatures as a form of punishment. The treatment of prisoners, particularly serial killers, was brutal. Inmates were subjected to physical and psychological abuse by both jail staff and other inmates. The place also had a reputation for being violent, with riots and clashes between rival gangs being common. One of the most notorious incidents in Carandiru's history occurred in 1992, when a riot broke out in the prison. The riot lasted for three days and resulted in the deaths of 111 inmates, many of whom were shot and killed by police officers who were sent to restore order. The prison cells in Carandiru were small and cramped, measuring only 2.5 by 2.5 meters, and often housed multiple multiple inmates. The conditions were unsanitary, with poor ventilation and limited access to natural light. The overcrowding was so severe that many inmates had to sleep on the floor or in hammocks. The conditions at Karandiru eventually became so deplorable that the place was closed in 2002 following a government investigation into the prison's operations. Today, the site where the prison once stood has been turned into a park and a memorial, with a museum dedicated to the memory of the inmates who suffered and died at Karandiru. Karandiru Penitentiary became a symbol of Brazil's struggle with its flawed justice system. The small, overcrowded cell and the use of extreme physical and psychological punishment, including the notorious fridge cells, created an environment that was degrading and dangerous for all inmates, particularly those who were classified as serial killers. The facility is closed, but the marks of torture still remain visible on the fabric of history. Number 3. Portsmouth Naval Prison, Maine Located on the grounds of the Portsmouth Naval Shipyard in Kittery, Maine, the Portsmouth Naval Prison was a maximum security facility used to house military personnel who had violated the Uniform Code of military justice. 
The reformatory was operational from 1908 to 1974, known for its strict disciplinary policies and harsh living conditions. Originally built in 1908 as a detention facility for sailors, it quickly became a maximum security prison for the military. The cells in Portsmouth Naval were small and cramped, with little room for movement. Convicts were given only basic necessities and were forced to endure extreme temperatures. During the summer months, the cells would become unbearably hot, while in the winter, they were freezing cold. Despite its reputation as a military jail, Portsmouth Naval was also home to several high-profile serial killers. One of the most notorious inmates was Joseph James D'Angelo, also known as the Golden State Killer, who was arrested in 2018 for a series of assaults and murders in California during the 1970s and 80s. D'Angelo was housed in a special section of the prison reserved for high-risk inmates. Portsmouth Naval Prison also had a special section called the Chicken Coop, which housed inmates who were considered to be the most dangerous and violent. The cells in this section were even smaller than the regular cells and had no windows, leaving detainees in complete and utter darkness. One of the other unique features of the place was its grill, a six-story cage-like structure that housed some of the most dangerous serial killers. The grill was constructed of steel bars and wire mesh, and it was designed to prevent escape attempts by the prisoners. In addition to the inhumane conditions of the cells, prisoners at Portsmouth Naval were subjected to harsh and often cruel treatment by the guards. Physical abuse, including beatings and waterboarding, was not uncommon. Despite the prison's reputation for brutality, it remained open until 1974, when it was closed due to concerns over its inhumane conditions. Today, the site of Portsmouth Naval Prison has been redeveloped into a luxury hotel and conference center. However, the memories of the jail's harsh conditions and notorious inmates still linger, serving as a reminder of the dark history of this military prison. Number 2. El Hongo Prison, Mexico Located in the state of Baja California, Mexico, El Hongo Prison was originally built in the 1950s as a rehabilitation center for drug addicts. But over time, it became a maximum security penitentiary that houses some of the most violent and dangerous criminals in Mexico. Serial killers are housed in separate sections of the prison, away from the general population. Their special cells, known as Los Pereira or the Dog Pound, are small, cramped spaces that are often used to punish or isolate inmates. In addition, there are special cells called the Black Rooms, used to isolate and punish prisoners who threaten other inmates or prison staff. The conditions in the Dog Pound are particularly brutal, with inmates confined to tiny, overcrowded cells and subjected to extreme heat and cold temperatures. Inmates are also reportedly denied basic necessities such as food, water, and medical attention, leading to numerous cases of illness and death. The guards in charge of these sections have a reputation for extreme brutality and numerous reports of torture and abuse. The black rooms are similarly harsh, with offenders confined to pitch black cells for extended periods, sometimes weeks or even months. The cells are small, with no windows or ventilation, and prisoners are often denied access to basic hygiene facilities. The purpose of these cells is to break the spirits of the most unruly and dangerous inmates and they are often used as a punishment for those who have committed violent crimes or posed a threat to others in prison. Despite widespread criticism and calls for reform, conditions in El Hongo remain bleak, particularly for those housed in the most dangerous sections. Inmates in the dog pound and black rooms face daily struggles for survival, with little hope for rehabilitation or release. The conditions of the place are savage, and no one has been able to do anything about it yet. Number 1. Kitarama Prison, Rwanda Tucked away in the heart of Rwanda is the notorious Kitarama Prison. Kitarama was originally built to accommodate 400 convicts, but held over 7,000 during the genocide. The overcrowding was extreme, with inmates sleeping on the floors and enduring appalling conditions. The prison is divided into sections, with each section housing prisoners who committed specific crimes. For serial killers, Kitarama Prison had two special sections, the Black Zone and the White House. The Black Zone and the White House were two sections of Kitarama a prison that were known for their contrasting conditions. While the White House was reserved for high-profile inmates, the Black Zone was a place of terror for many. The Black Zone was a small, windowless room where prisoners were taken to be interrogated and tortured. Inmates were shackled to the wall and subjected to electric shocks, beatings, and other forms of torture. The room had no ventilation, no sanitation, and prisoners were left to suffer in complete darkness. Many inmates did not survive their time in the Black Zone, and those who did often suffered from lasting physical and psychological damage. In contrast, the White House had relatively better conditions, with larger cells and access to basic amenities such as water and electricity. However, this section of the jail was still far from comfortable. Prisoners in the White House were required to stand barefoot for hours on end, often developing painful diseases such as podoconiosis 
meiosis. Inmates were also forced to eat their own urine and feces due to the lack of access to basic necessities. The conditions inside Gitarama were far beyond inhumane. With detainees crammed into small cells with no access to food or water, the prison guards were known for their brutal treatment of inmates, often subjecting them to physical abuse, torture, and sexual violence. The combination of overcrowding, malnutrition, and unsanitary living conditions resulted in the spread of deadly diseases such as cholera and dysentery, leading to the death of many prisoners. Despite the horrific conditions, some inmates managed to survive their time in Gitarama prison. Today, many of these survivors speak out about their experiences, raising awareness about the atrocities committed during the Rwandan genocide and the importance of respecting human rights. Gitarama prison serves as a reminder of the horrors that can occur when basic human rights are not only disregarded but stomped on, and the importance of holding those responsible for such atrocities accountable for their actions.